Questions on sampling frequently find their place in CISA exam. This video deals with sampling as defined in CRM. Let us discuss two basic sampling techniques, statistical and non-statistical. In statistical sampling, all items have equal chance of selection. Whereas in non-statistical, sampling is done on the basis of some judgment of auditor. So for example, if an auditor feels that one particular employee is more prone to error, he will select sample from the cases processed by that particular employee. So here subjectivity and judgment of auditor is involved. Other main distinction between statistical and non-statistical is that in statistical probability of error can be quantified. So for example, my total population is 100 and my sample size is 10. So out of 10, if I get error of 1, I can assume there is 10% error rate. So that cannot be assumed in non-statistical sampling. And this is very very important point for CISA exam. So, we need to remember that probability need to be objectively quantified then in such scenario we need to select statistical sampling. Now let us discuss attribute and variable sampling. So simple rule for attribute sampling. In attribute sampling we can have answer as either yes or no. So, Either it's been complied or not complied. That cannot be any third answer. On the other hand, in variable sampling, it gives us more information than attribute data. This is because it allows us to understand how much or how bad or how good rather than just yes, it's complied or no, it's not complied. So generally applied in compliance testing, it is applied in substantive testing. Attribute sampling express in percentage, whereas variable sampling express in either monetary values, weight or some other measures. So two things we need to understand from CISA exam point of view is that it compliance testing, attribute sampling, substantive testing, variable sampling. So I request to remember this term AC attribute compliance vs variable substantive this is very very important for CISA exam point of view let us discuss stop or go sampling and discovery sampling so stop and go sampling it is used when auditor believes that very few errors will be found it prevents excessive sampling by allowing an audit test to be stopped at the earliest possible moment now discovery sampling it is used when objective of audit to, is to discover fraud or other irregularities. So, point remembered for CISA exam. Whenever some term like fraud or major irregularity is given and then sampling technique is to be selected, we need to select discovery sampling. Important sampling topic. What is confidence coefficient? It is a probability that sample are too representative of the population. So to have high confidence correlation, we need to select high sample size. In other words, if we select high sample size, we will get confidence correlation that will be high. So this is how it's done. So for example, my population is 100 and my sample size is 90. So it will give me confidence of 95%. On the other hand, if I select only 25 sample size, my confidence will be lower, that is only 25%. So higher the sample size, higher the confidence. On the other hand, if we want to have higher confidence correlation, we need to seek higher sample size. So for CISA exam, we need to remember, whenever the internal controls are strong, we need not uh, have more sample size. So Confidence correlation or sample size may be lowered when strong internal controls are there. On the other hand, when weak internal controls are there, confidence correlation or sampling size need to be increased. So, point to remember for CISA exam. Sampling. Whenever compliance testing is there, our answer should be attribute sampling. So, remember AC. Attribute C for compliance testing. Whenever substantive testing is there, our answer should be variable sampling. So remember VS, 
variable sampling and substantive testing. So whenever any fraud indication is there, our answer should be discovery sampling. Okay, so when probability needs to be objectively quantifiable, we need to select statistical sampling. So this is the core of sample. Let us discuss some questions. Use of statistical sampling will be more relevant as compared to judgment sampling. When? So, statistical sampling is basically more relevant when we need to have probability of error to be objectively quantified. So, option A and D will not be there because any sampling technique of these two will not mitigate either sampling risk or audit risk. Second question, IS auditor is reviewing internal control of application software. Sampling method that will be most useful when testing for compliance is. So remember AC, so for AC attribute and compliance. So our answer should be compliance. So whenever attribute sampling is there, our answer should be compliance testing. And whenever sampling, variable sampling is there, our answer should be substantive testing. So AC and VS. So, with regard to confidence correlation, it can be said that if an auditor knows the internal controls are strong, confidence coefficient may be lowered. So, for CISA exam, we need to remember when internal controls are strong, your confidence correlation may be lowered. When internal controls are weak, we need to have high sample size and confidence correlation. An IS auditor reviewing critical financial application is concerned about the fraud. Which of the following sampling method would be best as is the auditor? So if you see, we are concerned about the fraud. And so our audit technique should be discovery sampling. So an IS auditor is determining the appropriate sample size for testing the effectiveness of CMP, change management process. No deviation noted in last two years audit and management has assured no deviation in process for the period under review. Auditor can adopt. So from the question it is seems that internal controls are strong. So we already discussed. When internal controls are strong lower confidence coefficient resulting in lower sample size can be used. Statistical sampling reduces which of the following risk? Audit risk? No. Audit risk is the control risk, inherent risk as well as detection risk. So statistical sampling will not have any impact on control as well as inherent risk. Detection risk is the risk that auditor fails to detect any material misstatement in financial statement. So improper statistical sampling increases this kind of risk. Thanks for watching. Please visit datainfosec.com for more such videos.